Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video. Today, the wait is finally over. I get to talk about Christmas 2020 in Fake Grand Order uh, North America. I'm global. It's not just North America, it's global across the world. Anyway, <laughs> we're going to talk about Samba Night Holy Night. That's going to be today's video. I hope you like it. If you do, remember to hit that like button. It helps me a whole bunch, more than you probably know. You can subscribe to me if you want some more stuff, and of course you can comment about any of the things we talk about, specifically this event, because oh my god, finally, I have been waiting, I've been saving since the beginning of this year uh, for this specific event, and I'll explain why when we get to it, but that's, let's start with the first things first. Um, this is a Christmas event for 2020. If North America is following Japan, this event is never coming back. The reason it's never coming back no idea no one actually knows um a lot of people think it's because it's related to kaniku man um there's never been any proof that kaniku man specifically targets people who um make parodies of kaniku man but that is always because it is such since it's such a homage to kaniku man people just assume it's that um but yeah this event's never coming back and this has a free free to play um four star in it ruler uh samba quets over here you can see her in her majestic glory right here um so literally this is your one chance this is your only chance to get her in any of the um craft essences related to the event they will never come back uh they have not even come back on a banner because technically they're waiting to be rerun again so and as of december 10th 2020 the event has never come back to japan for whatever reason so this is the website for it. Um, event period, it will start on December 12th. Yeah, December 12th, and it'll go until actually Christmas Day. All right. Uh, sweet. No, this oh, 12th. 2020, 12, 13. I'm so bad with some of these sometimes. So it starts on the 13th. But chances are maintenance will start on the 12th. So let's just quickly read what it has right here. Um, Tis the season of Santa once more in Chaldea. This year, the previous Santa has selected a certain goddess to inherit the power of Santa Claus. Leave it to me, I'm very good for this sort of thing, yes. As she tackled her uh, Santa duties in a surprisingly normal way, it seemed this year's Christmas was going off without a hitch. That is, until Caldea detected a new singularity in Mexico. Master and company head there to investigate and find themselves in a, find themselves in a snow-covered city filled with the sound of winter rejoicing. I had my suspicions, but... This isn't Santa, this is Samba. A new kind of miracle descends upon the city where mass fighters assemble. The starting bell of the thrilling carnival of the Holy Night rings now. Samba Santa. Um, basically, the entire reason for this singularity is um, Quetz, her, I guess her original language is... I don't know why they do it with her specifically, but I do like it that they're doing it with her. So I'm also Hispanic, so maybe I'm giving it a pass. But she has trouble understanding the dialect of Jap Japanese, I guess. So that she assumed hearing Santa that meant Samba. Um, even though I think that makes no sense when you actually think about um, how <laughs> the summoning system in Fate works. But whatever, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna throw a hissy fit. So this is the free four star Samba Santa. She is a ruler who is AOE. I think there's two other there's not a lot there is amakatsu who is a five-star ruler who is aoe and in terms of pure aoe um annoyance i think he is technically better but hey free aoe ruler whatever she let me tell you amakatsu cannot pull off this look you could try hmm. but i'm just saying we all know um the five star for the summon is going to be bradamante she is one of the 12 paladins of charlemagne she's french Astolfo's buddy as far as I'm aware and that's all the site tells us but it's okay because we can look in the Japanese side of the game where it happened in 2018 um so here's the important thing before I even go to the banner because this is literally the most important thing in the entire event in fake grand order there's a specific thing called lotto season which is um basically doing an event over and over and over again to get tickets to go for a lotto and then when you use those tickets you get the event inside you get like a certain you get these items basically and then once you get all the items you reset back to the beginning and you do that ad nauseum until you're satisfied i guess um a lot of good materials usually show up in this this year's lotto has bones 
There's bones in here. There's dragon fangs. These two items are used on so many servants. Let me look at unlucky bones because it's actually kind of ridiculous. Um, so here's the main problem. Not only is uh, it used by a lot of servants, as you can see here in this long ass list, um, their prices are crazy. Like for example, Jolter needs 30 of them. Um, who is the craziest one? I think King Asan has like the cra- Yeah, Shiki, who is the four star, uh, four star, needs 108 bones to fully finish her skills. Um, Old Man Lee he needs 132 bones. <laughs> That's not counting the 22 he needs for Ascension, and King Hassan is exactly the same. Look at all these assassins. If you have these four assassins, there's no way for you to... You would be literally bone dry. Tamamo, she needs bones. She needs all the bone in that she can get. Um, a lot of these characters just need an insane... Raik, she needs... <laughs> 132 to finish her skills. Fucking Vlad needs 216. <laughs> There's so many bones. There's so so many units need so many bones. And they suck to grind. This lotto is going to be your best chance to just get a buttload of bones. You know? So let's say you... Um, so let's do you say you do all 10 and you finish all of them. I believe you would get 30 bones. So, so 100 would be 300 bones. I think I end up doing around 200 by the end of this. I don't know. I don't know how deep I'll go, but just it's something to realize. If you need bones for someone, this is your best chance. Um, there's a lot of other goods. Dragon Fangs are also. Let me look at Dragon Fangs. Dragon Fangs isn't as crazy as bones, but oh my god, Dragon Fangs. So, yeah. 30 from Jolter from that as well. Dantes needs 36. Uh, Quetzalcoatl needs 108. Um, 77 on this side here. 108. There's nothing as crazy, I think, as 200. At least I don't think so. Um, Berserker Lot needs a, just too many. This is, yeah, it's 144 just for skills. Um... So yeah, high demand. I also need uh, these specific dragon fangs for saber as well. Basically, if you want to use any saber, um, Artoria, Arthur, whatever you want to call him, Mordred, technically speaking, uh, you need dragon fangs because almost all of them use dragon fangs. Freaking Nero needs 144 dragon fangs, and that's not counting Ascension. So um, two very good. Brunton. The reason that you use so much is because, in theory, bronze is supposed to drop a whole bunch, but Fake Grand Order doesn't understand that, so it ends up actually being just a big pain in the butt to grind any bronze material at all. Um, so, Lotto. Very important this time around. Alright, now let's look at the actual summon campaign, because this is the part where I tell you um, there's really not a lot of reason to summon on this, unless you're a huge fan of Quetzalcoatl or Bradamante. So, let me first talk about Bradamante. You'll notice that she doesn't have a lock. That means that she's not limited in any form. She can actually randomly show up in any of your summons. Um, this also means later on uh, there should be a free 5-star ticket coming to North America. If you badly love Bradamante, you can just wait and not summon on this banner. Um, this does have a uh, swimsuit Martha on it. There's usually not a lot of banners. I think most recently... Um, Japan has actually started experimenting with putting more summer swimsuit units in banners, but up until this point, this was, I think, the first time. No, no, because Raiko was the first time. They don't do it. Like, in this year, um, outside of summer um, banners, I think, yeah, this year alone, only Raiko and Summer Martha have ever um, not been in a banner that wasn't summer. I don't know why that took me such a long time to say. Um... So yeah, as you can see here, time frame, first day, Bradamante, um, Martha, Ryder. The other thing is that the other four stars is Martha Ryder, which I love my girl Martha. Martha Ryder is not a, not, not the greatest. If you're starting out, she can be pretty useful. She can also be a pretty good AoE, I think. Um, is it enough to make you go crazy for summoning? I don't think so. At least not in her current form, I don't think. Um... But the other thing, which is the reason I've been saving like crazy, as you can see here on this, I think in one, two, three. So it starts with Bradamante um, and the two four stars. Then it's Bradamante and one four star, 
Bradamante and another four star. And then the next day, it is Quetzalcoatl, who is story locked, which is basically limited but way worse because they're much bigger pains in the ass to actually try and summon. Um, and the two featured four stars. So I'm pretty sure this is the last time Quetzalcoatl will ever be on a solo raid up banner. Um, she doesn't really show up a whole bunch in Japan side just because I think somehow her popularity is more for people over on our side. Um, not to say that she doesn't have a sp very specific fan base who loves the big sister type, because let me tell you, plenty of people, there are thousands of us out there. They just don't, um, they just don't all play Fae Grand Order, unfortunately. Um, so this will probably be the last time she'll ever have a solo raid up because North America got all the Babylon, um, story summon stuff early, so there's no chance of us getting that later. Unless Japan decides to have one later, that's basically it. Um, so, yeah, you would only want to, I think these, these craft, these craft assistants are really cool, like, I love this one, for example, which features, <laughs> which features a three-star Eric the Blood Axe and, um, my oh boy, I cannot remember you right now, because your art style is just so crazy, look at this art, first of all, it is insane, um, the Golem Man, Golem Daddy, as I'm about to call him, because I can't remember his name at the moment. Um, this this is an amazing three star. I love the art on it. Um, the Valkyrie, Ring the Bell, also fantastic. But in terms of what they actually do, it's like Buster three percent MP damage, not no big deal. NP gain, NP and crit damage, not the greatest thing in the world. You can easily find another replacement for this. Quick Arts and 10% start NP 40%. Maybe if I was starting NP 50%, but at 40% you're really limited on what kind of units you can use with this until you get at, I guess, max <laughs> maximum start out. Um, free to play wise, though. Let me quickly look at... I think it's right here. Oh. Oh, man. That's really good. Um... The command code is Holy Knights Aurora, Aurora Borealis. Gain four crit stars when attacking using the engraved card. Uh, sword at the beginning and the end. Increase damage by 1000 by the engraved card. And removes, and we finally, is Wicked Dis Discipline's command seal removes one defense up buff from an enemy when attacking using the engraved card. All okay. They have their uses for sure. Um, this event is also the start of someone getting a costume dress. Up until this point, free-to-play units never got costume dresses. Um, Quetzalcoatl, uh, Samba Quetz is the first one to ever get one. Um, so show some damn respect for my girl with her amazing mask. She actually has two. She has a, a, the, 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 um, not the heel. Um, she has the face mask, which is the, the good guy mask. And she has the Rudo mask, which is the villain, um, named after what, um, Luchadors call the villain of wrestling. The yeah, there you go. The event craft essence is here. You go. Um, increase Buster and quick performance by eight percent. Gain fifteen crit stars when entering the battlefield once. The f gain. So golden catching the carp. Golden catching the carp is better because it gives you fifty percent NP. Um, but still, being able to get a bunch of crit stars is still really good, especially since not a lot of people have golden catching the carp at this point. Um, so it can definitely be solid if you're looking for a crit build of some kind. These are also the units on raid up that have one um, damage up, uh, event damage up, and then also have bond point bonus. So if you use these, they get 50% more bond. I want to say this is the first time they do it for this event too. At least I can't remember doing it in a previous event. All right. So yeah. The basics of it here are basically, even though this event never shows up again, unless you're a collector like me and wants these craft essences because they never show up again, not a lot of reason for you to summon on this. Like I said, if you love Bradamante, it's better to wait for the five the five star ticket and save your stuff for people who are limited. I love my girl Quetz, so if you badly want Quetz, this is your last chance, I think. Um, and if you badly want Swimsit, Swimsit? Swimsuit Martha, you could also do it that way too. Um, so yeah, that's basically the event. Oh, let me see here. Um, you know, basic basic shop. You don't really... The shop is there and has some nice stuff in it. You can get some statues if you're a new player. Um, some shells, which is nice for swimsuit units because all swimsuit units use shells. Uh, ooh, and shell. And gunpowder as well. Some nice stuff, but you know. 
the main draw and focus here is the lotto so the event shop ends up being like oh very, it's very nice that you have this that's basically it for me i think um yeah and that's this event it only sh again i cannot emphasize this enough it only shows up once it is never returned i don't know when it's going to return i don't know if it if it will ever return again um these are all things i just have no idea why um nobody knows and anyone who pretends to know don't actually they don't actually know until we actually hear from um the the devs themselves we will just never know why santa, santa samba quets never returned but she just never returned to the game so this is your one chance to get her um, you should absolutely get her. Uh, this is the event I've been looking forward to the most. I love my girl. This is literally her event. Um, I can't be like other people who love servants who easily get events. My life would be so much easier if I had someone who constantly got event servants or something. Uh, like if I was a big fan of Nobu or Akita, then I knew that they would constantly get Gouda Gouda events and you would get more stuff with them. But I'm, as much as I love them, they're not my number one. My number one's right here. So that's the end of today's video, everyone. I hope you like it. I hope you found some use for it. And again, can't emphasize this enough. Never returning. So <sighs> remember to do it. And I think you only need to be, be yeah, you need to clear Anastasia. So you need to beat Lost Belt 1. So that's kind of a bummer for a lot of people now that I think about it. Jesus, that's rough. That is rough. But that's the end of today's video, everyone. I hope you liked it. If you did. Remember to hit that like button. Subscribe to me if you want some more stuff. I am definitely going to be doing a tiny little summon banner because I do want, <laughs> specifically ignoring my advice, I am going to be doing some summons for Rodamonte. Um, not many, maybe three multis. And then the rest I'm just going to be saving up for Quetz. I do want Rodamonte just because I want the tag team partner of Quetz. In terms of an actual unit, by the way, because I didn't really mention Rodamonte, if you have Scotty, she's very good with her. She's not the best because I think in terms of Quick Lancer, Parvati is still better than her. Um, but also, I mean, ugh. all right, one moment as I pause. All right, I'm back and here's Bradamante's NP. Yep, yep, pretty good, pretty good, pretty fancy. And stop. Okay, so with that, I will now leave you. <laughs> Which is one of the reasons why I'm going to be summoned for Bradamante. She has a very much nicer view of a noble phantasm than Parvati. That's basically the whole setup there. So that's the end of today's video, everyone. I hope you liked it. See you guys in the next one. Goodbye. And good luck. Bye-bye.